Okay, here's how to use the z-score to percentile calculator. Super easy, just enter in the z-score for the area you're looking up. Hit submit. It's going to default to the two-sided area. So this large shaded area in here represents 98% of the area under the normal curve. And because all the area adds up to 100%, the rest of it is just 1.24%, and that's this small area there. So these two add up to 100%. Uh, you could also enter a negative z-scores. So a negative one z-score shows you that uh, the bulk of the area in this case is on this side, so that's about 68% again is over here, and 31% of the area in the tails is over here, 31.7. You could also enter in fractions, partial, so we get uh, about a z-score of 0.333 equals about 26% of the area here, and then in the tails there's more, and the tails represents uh, 73%. You can also change this to one-sided areas, so a uh, z-score of 1 with one-sided area is only going to provide one side of the area under the curve, in this case it's 84%, and the area above would be 15.86%. Okay, if you're going to want to do more than looking up uh, z-scores, there's a lot more that can be done in the Excel calculator. Just click on this link to download and purchase the calculator, which I'll show next. z-score calculator in the Excel file it does pretty much everything you're going to want to do with z-scores uh, with some nice visualization. So let's start with the most uh, common thing you're going to want to do It's convert a z-score to a percentage. So you click this link here and you just enter in whatever the z-score is. What's a z-score of 1? It provides you with 84 percent of the area. You can see that here shown in this graph. That's the one-tailed area, one-tailed percentage, and the two-tailed area, which is the 68% uh, percent of a, a, a z-score of 1 accounts for about 68% of the area here in between. We could change that to a 2, and we could see that accounts for 95% versus 97%. Um, 1.96 would get you pretty much right at 95%, and that's what's typically used in a lot of uh, statistical calculations. We could also go negative, negative 1 z-score. It associates, again, shows here on the one-sided, and then just uh, keeps the same amount of area, just knowing that it's a smaller proportion in this case. Uh, and then you can use any type of fraction as well. It gives you that area dynamically updating. Let's go back to the home page. We could convert a percentage to a z-score. As you can see here, we've got 95%, which converts to the two-tailed z-score of 1.96, roughly. That's shown in this area here, or the one-tailed z-score of 1.644. So if we wanted to know what the z-score is for a 90%, you can see the one- and two-tailed z-scores. The graphs automatically update. We could say 99% in here. We could say 75%. And again, it's showing you visually the area under the curve associated with the one-sided area or two-sided area back to the home page. Another common one, this, this is best done with the calculator, is the area between two z-scores. If we have between a negative 1 and a 1, we could see again it's counting about 84 percent of the area. The area in between would be 68 percent. But what's nice is you could say how much area is it between negative 2.5 and a 1? So it's asymmetrical here and you could see that's 83 percent or 80, not quite 84 percent. Uh, so it shows the smaller area and the larger area. The area between is just the larger minus the smaller. This is a common question in a lot of statistical um, st statistics books that want to cal calculate the area in between, which reinforces the idea that you can add subtract areas of normal curves. And so we could say here's area of 2 again, or we could say between 0 and 2, and it, it, all the time updating you visually and giving you the numeric uh, area. Back to the home page. Probably one of the more useful things I think about this calculator is that you can um, do all sorts of what-if scenarios and again answer common statistical questions. So what I've got here is uh, the typical value for an IQ score is something around uh, the mean value is 100 with a population standard deviation of 16. This calculator from one data point tells you the probability of any one person getting a, for example, a uh, IQ score of 112 and it tells you a 112 has a Z score of 0.75 or they would put them in the 77th percentile. Well what about somebody with an IQ score of 105? Well it has a Z score of 0.31, puts in the 62nd percentile or so, or so and if somebody's right at the 100th you could see it gives them a Z score of 0 which means they're right on the mean or they're right at the 50th percentile. 
and then all the while these values are updating as well so if, let's say somebody below the mean of an IQ of 95 so the probability greater than this area is 37 uh, I'm sorry 62 and then 37 what's also nice is given these values you can say well um, what proportion of people would score between a let's say a 95 and a 105 and then that area here is going to the calculation show up here the probability scores between 95 and 105 is about 24 uh, 0.245 or 24 percent again the calculations are happening here or let's say between 100 and 105 again that updates there as well and then as well it, it tells you it automatically tells you uh, the 95th percent value of what the z-score would be the, the z-score and then the of uh, the IQ score given whatever you put in here so somebody in the 95th percentile would have to have an IQ, IQ score of uh, um, 126 um, Again, we could change this to if it was a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5, and then somebody with a 55 is one standard deviation above the mean. And so to be in the 95th percentile, they need a 58 in that case. Okay. Um, 58.22. You can see all that works together. Back to the home page. The other thing is for a mean, we just were looking at data point, but let's use the same example of IQ scores, knowing that the typical average is 100 and the standard deviation is 16. Let's say there was a class of 25 students and the uh, average IQ score from that class of 25 students was 105. Well, what's the probability that their mean score really is 100 there? And, and you could see that displayed over here. The probability mean is less than 105 is 94%. So basically, this class is in, in the 94th percentile. You would only expect a class of 25 students to have an IQ score uh, about 6% higher than 105. As the sample size gets larger, this becomes much more improbable. Because what's happening in here is we're saying, well, what's the probability, if the population mean really is 100, of obtaining a sample of 105? And again, so at a sample of 100, it becomes highly improbable if this is really sampled from an IQ of 100 for this to happen. So it might be 100 gifted students in this case. And then again, you got the area in between as well, uh, which is, is displayed up here. The probability of mean uh, between 95 and 105 would be about 99%. And then finally, the calculator also does, if you never need to do a lot of z-score conversions, um, just put the z-score in here. It's easy copy and paste. Sometimes if you're copying and pasting a lot of z-scores, it'll give you the one and two-tailed area, then one minus the area, one minus the area for the one and two-tailed. And the same thing from many percentages to z-scores as well. Pretty much everything you're going to want to do with Z-scores, it's also covered in the Z-crash course as well.